Hello YouTube and fellow Star Wars collectors! On this episode of Toys Are The Way, we will be taking a look at one of the latest waves of vintage collection figures. If you're new to the channel or a fan of Star Wars collecting, be sure to smash a like on this video, remember to subscribe, and make sure to ring that bell to stay notified. What's up everyone? As you can see, I have another wave of vintage collection figures that's finally been delivered. We have the Weequay, Tusken Warrior, Darth Vader, Death Star 2, Han Solo from Return of the Jedi, and Captain Hauser. Initially, I was really looking forward to getting this wave. There were certain characters in here that I was very excited to add to the collection, but after getting it, I will say that this is so far my least favorite wave of the year. I recently reviewed the Cad Bane wave, and I will say that that one was much better in my opinion. I was able to get that one a little bit earlier by importing it from Asia, and yeah, I'm happy to have this one. It's good that it's showing up, but there are a few things that I do have some problems with. But with that being said, let's take a closer look at each one of these figures. And first up, we have Clone Captain Hauser on a Bad Batch card. Literally the figure nobody requested. This originally said Captain Ballast when he came out in the Bad Batch 4-pack. And, you know, I give credit to Hasbro. They wanted to correct a mistake. That's totally cool. But this is such a missed opportunity as well because literally the wave prior to this, we had a wonderful updated new clone sculpt. Fantastic stuff. We recently got the 212th using that wonderful mold. And, you know, Hasbro could have easily repainted that mold to give us a great Captain Hauser. So that would have been two updates for the price of one. I would have been very excited for that. I think some other people would have accepted that better. But instead, we're getting this outdated skinny leg clone sculpt that, you know, I don't hate it, but I absolutely would have took the upgrade with the rocker ankles and all that great articulation. What a missed opportunity by Hasbro. And on the back, he's of course VC210 in the line. And while I'm happy to have this one in the collection, I will not be reviewing this figure. I think many of us by now are very familiar with VC45 and, you know, the articulation. I just wanted to say that this was a very, you know, missed opportunity by Hasbro. Not to mention, we are seeing this horrible, horrible scuff marking on vintage collection card backs recently. And it's because of the thicker cardstock, which is fantastic, you know. Um, but it's not fitting inside the cases as well. So cards that are being laid on this with their bubble are rubbing against this. I'm not sure if, you know, these are getting printed and allowing enough time for them to sit and dry, but that's something that Hasbro really needs to work on as well. So unfortunately, I have this updated Captain Hauser card back, and it's not in the best condition and not the best figure we could have for this character either. Moving right along, we have the Tusken Warrior on a wonderful Book of Boba Fett card. This is one that I've been looking forward to adding to my collection. Whether you like the series or didn't, there is no denying that the Tusken Warrior was an absolutely incredible character. Very happy to have this one in the Vintage Collection, and this is a nice card back image. We have the character on the sands of Tatooine with the Kenner logo down below, all in all looking pretty fantastic. Additionally, I love that lime name pill color. It's just so vibrant and really pops and helps this figure really stand out on the card as well. Unfortunately, here you can see some of that like um, scuff marking on my sample, which nearly every card in this box had that. So very unfortunate stuff. On the back, she's VC 279 in the line. And I'm happy to continue to add more characters from the Book of Boba Fett to my carded collection. Once again, the Tuscan Warrior was fantastic, and I'm actually looking forward to getting this figure with that set with the Massive coming out. So, really looking forward to that one as well. Taking a look at the Tuscan Warrior out of the packaging, we have a very nice figure here with lots of sculpting and detail throughout. The level of detail in the lower robes is fantastic in my opinion, and the head sculpt is done very well. It has soft plastic that doesn't hinder any movement, and all in all, that's just looking very fantastic. The downside to this figure is it's mostly reused tooling. So this figure is actually pretty much Ray Jakku with a new head. Here you can see the arms are exactly the same, and actually the torso as well is the same, just painted black. And we have the same legs as well. From below the knees, it's different. So if you take a look under the skirt, with that gaffy stick, you can see that these are the same legs. The downside to that is that these are a very outdated ball joint system. While they are ball jointed, which is nice, they do not have a swivel at the thigh. And my problem with that is that 
just to get certain poses, you need all of that articulation. Otherwise, it's pretty much just a weird, wide, open leg stance. Um, I find it very frustrating. As somebody who likes to pose these and really dynamic and realistic fighting scenes, it just doesn't work for me. Additionally, I cannot get this figure's knee to do a proper 90 degree bend. So if you turn it around a little bit, it gives you close to the, the 90 degree bend. But the problem is that because it doesn't have a thigh swivel, I can't turn it. It has to go with wherever the ball joint's going. So I just can't get this figure in certain positions, which is really a shame because, you know, the Tuscan Warrior was able to do a lot of different fighting stances. And yeah, that's really where Hasbro dropped the ball for me. The arms are okay. Um, they're pretty good. I know they look a little thin in terms of like the character, but I can live with that. I think, you know, if they really wanted to go the extra mile, they should have done something differently with the legs down there. But all in all, the figure is pretty nice. It looks fantastic. But yeah, that's just kind of a letdown for me. The Tuscan Warrior was very high on my list of must-have figures from the book of Boba Fett. And while I'm glad to see her in the vintage collection, the release does not entirely live up to the character's presence on screen. The warrior was an exceptionally skilled fighter who displayed total control against her opponents in combat. While the Tuscan warrior has ball jointed hips and rocker ankles, she is limited in the number of dynamic fighting stances she can achieve. The ball jointed hips from Ray Jakku were told in 2016, and the lack of swivels on the thigh unfortunately limit much of the figure's range of motion. Additionally, the excessive sculpting on the area just above the knee only allows for a 45 degree angle at best. Fortunately, Hasbro included new lower legs with rocker ankles that will allow fans to achieve some gaffy stick fighting stances, but not easily or many in terms of variety. The use of outdated tooling is truly a blunder when it comes to displaying this figure, especially when compared to Chirrut from Rogue One. This character was equally as skilled and capable of handling themselves in battle, and due to proper tooling can do so with ease. While there are many limitations holding the Tuscan Warrior back, I am happy to add it to the collection, but will certainly be looking for ways to upgrade the leg articulation myself moving forward. Moving on, we have Darth Vader Death Star 2 on a Return of the Jedi card, with the 40th anniversary logo in the top left corner. Here we have a fantastic image of Darth Vader once he has come back from the dark side and is redeemed. This is a classic scene between him and Luke Skywalker, and I gotta say that I was very excited to get this card back into my collection. Unfortunately, like all the other cards, it has some of that scuff marking you can see down here and a little bit of the bubble indentation as well, which is such a shame that all the cards are looking like that in this case. This is one that I was really looking forward to putting with my Imperial carded collection. But regardless, a very good looking card back and we have a fantastic looking Darth Vader on a bubble. Here you can see him with all the accessories that he comes with. A wonderful three piece helmet, which looks pretty good in my opinion. So. All in all, good looking figure and card. And on the back, he is VC 280 in the line. I really hope I can find a nice carded sample of this sometime in the future. It's really such a shame that, you know, we're having to deal with this. First, it was, you know, the card backs are too thin. Now they're perfect, but we're seeing these bubble indents. So hopefully I can find a much nicer sample sometime in the future because this is such a good card back that I really want a pristine sample. Taking a look at Vader out of the packaging, we have a really nice head sculpt in my opinion. The level of detail and paint applications have been done very well, and I just think this is a nice representation of the character without their helmet. I also really like the battle damage arm with the silver effect there. I think that looks really neat, and it's nice that Hasbro paid attention to, you know, the paint applications that go on his belt and his reader as well, so very cool stuff. The helmet is also done very nicely. It's really smart engineering that's going on here. You can pop the head off and also take this piece as well. So it is a three part helmet. And if you simply put on the other piece like so, and just make sure it's nice and flush, and then put the remaining top on, you have your Vader with a helmet. Really, really nice work here. You know, when it comes to helmets, I'm usually not a big, you know, removable helmet person. I prefer a hard sculpted swappable head, but this is done very well. So fantastic stuff, Hasbro. Really, really looks good. And not only is the engineering fantastic when it comes to the helmet, but it's also really cool to see that we have this nice engineering for the battle damaged arm. So it's kind of on this like interesting peg system where you can take this part of his like upper glove off 
and then you get a non-damaged version which you can slip onto the peg make sure it's nice and flush and then take the spare hand that you are given and insert that as well just push it in and there you go there you have your vader with a non-damaged arm so another very cool feature to see and it's really nice to see that hasbro's also putting this perfect vader sculpt to use this is the dark times version except you know painted and engineered to be slightly different for this return of the jedi 40th anniversary version in my opinion darth vader death star 2 has been one of the strongest character releases for this year's return of the jedi 40th anniversary at least thus far it's figures like this vader that highlight the crucial importance of our support as collectors and hasbro's investment in proper all new from the ground up tooling that was seen in the initial kenobi dark times vader that has allowed them to deliver another 375 masterpiece the figure sports a three-part removable helmet and a swappable decapitated arm allowing fans to recreate vader's final moments with luke aboard the second death star i personally cherish tooling and accessories like these because they also allow us to use our imagination and place a battle damage vader in another setting while this vader is only a partially tooled new figure it checks a lot of boxes in terms of sculpting and articulation and raises the bar on vintage collection quality nonetheless and next up, we have another figure that's part of the Return of the Jedi 40th Anniversary, and it is Han Solo naturally on a Return of the Jedi card back. Here we have a nice image of Han Solo, very classic stance. This is a deleted scene from inside the bunker, and all in all, it's a great image of Harrison Ford. Uh, we have the Kenner logo down below, and I think everything just like ties together very nicely. Unfortunately, once again, we have a little bit of that scuff marking there, and just all in all, a pretty decent card back. Red name pill color helps the figure pop out. And here we have that Han Solo who actually looks pretty good at this angle. I will say that this is definitely not my favorite Han Solo. It's a huge upgrade, but I think some things could have been done differently for sure. And on the back, he is VC 281 in the line. So this is definitely a fantastic card back and a really nice upgrade to our Han Solo figures. All the existing ones prior to this are pretty awful in comparison now. Uh, I will just say that, you know, for Han Solo, who's a main character, Hasbro should have done a little bit more. This figure could have used, you know, rocker ankles and just, it's not exactly the Han Solo that we've all been hoping for, but I will say that it's nice that they got it out in time for the bunker and part of the Return of the Jedi 40th. But with that being said, I really would like to see an all new Han Solo, brand new from the ground up for our A New Hope version that we hopefully will see one day in the vintage collection. An original trilogy character like Han Solo should sport all the modern articulation, sculpting, and attention to detail that we as collectors appreciate and are becoming more and more familiar with in the vintage collection. While this return of the Jedi version of Han Solo is a huge upgrade to the previous Endor trench coat release, it still does not qualify as a definitive version of the character. The return of the Jedi Han Solo is a partial retool based off the 2018 Solo movie figure, which fortunately has ball jointed hips, and much of the tooling one would need to a modern Star Wars figure. And while that was great for the time, there have been huge advancements in articulation since then. Despite the lack of rocker ankles and new style barbell hips, Han Solo can still achieve a number of decent poses and even replicate his quick draw gunslinging stance seen on the card back. But I think it's safe to say that vintage collection fans are still waiting for a definitive upgrade to this main character. And finishing off the wave, we have another Return of the Jedi character, Weequay, on his 40th anniversary card back. Here we have a nice image of the character aboard one of the prisoner skiffs just before the Battle of the Sarlacc pick goes into full effect. I really like this card back. I'm very happy to have this one. This is a character that I still need open and carded. Um, once again, a little bit of damage on there. It's not as noticeable as many of the other card backs, but... I will still probably look for a better carded sample in the future. And on the back, he is VC 107 in the line. So it's really nice that Hasbro was able to reissue a lot of these skiff guards since most of these were very expensive on the secondary market. And I know a lot of people wanted to have carded samples and open samples. So all in all, this is just a good one to get back out there. Despite some of the limitations, you know, it being a TVC 1.0 figure, it doesn't have all the articulation or just things that we're seeing this day in the line. But regardless, happy to have it in the collection. And taking a quick look at Weequay out of the packaging, he looks pretty good for a TVC 1.0 figure. I don't have the original release, so we can't compare it to that, but 
All in all, we have some nice sculpting here. I think this is one of the better face sculpts out of, you know, all the uh, skiff guards. It just looks very, you know, rugged and very weak way. So very cool to see that. Um, the only things I really find bothersome when it comes to the skiff guards are just the lack of inconsistencies when it comes to paint applications. So if you look at his vibro axe and then look at like Wolf's, there's detailing on that, which I think looks great. And I really wish they would do something more consistent. I don't know why they're like different for each one. Um, some of the other ones also have just all molded plastic color, which it just doesn't look that great in my opinion. But regardless, I could always paint that if I really wanted to. But taking a look at Weeque, he's got some nice sculpting on his like vest and his ammo pouches or whatever he keeps in there. A little bit of a letdown that he doesn't have a holster, but I don't think he had one on screen, so it's okay. I'll just put this blaster somewhere else or just have him hold it for the meantime. But yeah, you know, he's got ball jointed knees, which is nice, but he does have these swivel thighs, which aren't great. You know, he's not going to be stopping anyone. He's definitely going in the Sarlacc pit with those legs. So, but all in all, happy to have this one in the collection. I'll probably try to customize this and see if I can upgrade his hips with ball joints but for now very happy to have him and he will be going on my skiff for sure unfortunately due to outdated swivel hips jabba the hutt's henchman known only as weequay is severely limited in his range of motion and cannot achieve the dynamic fighting stances need to combat luke skywalker jedi knight aboard the prisoner skiff i guess you can say it was his lack of agility that left him destined to be slowly digested over a thousand years sorry weequay it would have been exceptional if Hasbro had updated the leg articulation on this character, making it truly definitive. But until then, I will have to find a customizing solution to combat these terrible swivel hips, allowing Weequay to become the skiff guard I have always dreamed of owning. Despite these limitations, the figure looks great and I'm happy to add it to the collection. I hope you've enjoyed this video and taking a look at this recent wave of vintage collection figures. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps and it's always greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone and may the force be with you.